Okay, being that it's 630, um, we'll call the Cultural Arts Commission for the State of South San Francisco to order on Thursday, September 16th, 2021. Can we have a roll call? Of course, good evening, commissioners. Um, I see Chair Dinatali logged on, Vice Chair Campania, um, Commissioner Bond. Oh, I see you there. Perfect. Uh, I see Commissioner Hobson Cord, Commissioner Boldenwick, Commissioner Cancino, Commissioner Bowen, Commissioner Foley, uh, Commissioner Maharaj. I think we are waiting on uh, Commissioner Ramos and Commissioner Mardahe. I also see. Thank you. Thank you. And um, has everyone had a chance to? review the agenda and are there any proposed changes to be made hearing none um we'll move forward um same goes with the approval of minutes do i have any objections or requests to change the approval of minutes from august 19th 2021 okay hearing none the minutes will stand as written uh thank you catherine and um, I don't see any citizens on the call today. Have we received any um, notes in advance, Angela, from citizens? None via email, and I think none via voicemail, right, RC? Okay, it'll bring us to unfinished business. Um, so first item on the agenda for unfinished business is the San Mateo County Arts Grant. Yes, um, so I actually was hoping to have more news on this item. I put it on the agenda at the request of Chair De Natale in case we had more information and more specifics about what would be required of the potential grant opportunity from the San Mateo County Art and Culture group, but um, the latest we have, I did get some information which I shared as the first page under correspondence, and they are announcing that there will be a grant opportunity. Um, they mentioned that it's a trust-based grant opportunity, which um, I'm not really sure what that means, but I think that the county is making efforts to reduce the administrative burden of these grants. Um, also to make it more, um, make it easier for small and emerging organizations to not only apply, but also be responsive to whatever the grant requirements will be. Um, so more information should be coming out soon. The grant opportunity will open on September 29th and close on October 15th. And there is a workshop that I have signed up for to get more information. The workshop is on Tuesday. September 21st at 2 p.m. So um, again, if anyone's interested in more details, you can either follow up with me and I'll share with you what I have, or it's also in your correspondence. But if anyone has any other questions um, or, or would like to entertain more thoughts for this opportunity, um, I'm happy to take notes. So Angela, I guess I have a question with it with the application process being open and closing between now and our next commission meeting, will um, city staff just take our ideas and um, determine based on the scope of that grant and the requirements, which opportunity is most feasible, both for city staff and the um, parameters that the grant will yes. provide? Yeah, I think that's what we do. And then, um... We can, we can send an update via email or if it's like something that might involve a specific subcommittee, you know, we might be reaching out for that. Um, but yeah, without the specifics, it's, it's just, it's hard to know which angle to take with it. Okay. So of course, between our last meeting and now, one more idea came okay. to me. Uh, one more idea came to me that I shared with Angela, but of course wanted to share with all of you. So um, as I was looking at Instagram one day, uh, what came across my feed was a poetry box. And that's similar to the free libraries that you see on corners, like 
for example, a Burry Burry school, there's one on the corner where kids could put books in and out. Um, we've seen things like that for art chairs and other types of things, but this one was simply an enclosed box that closed or locked and had uh, poetry in it. So um, as people walked by, you can read one poem and it seemed that they swapped it out every month. And this was specifically posted by someone in San Jose and it's in Willow Glen. Um, if there's the ability for me to drop a screenshot in the chat, I will add it in there at some time. But um, I remembered, as I saw this, I remembered in our survey results, there was a interest in us also representing literary arts. And so um, just felt like that might have been a low cost feasible thing to um, do something new if we weren't able to do some of the existing things that we were talking about. So would like to put that into the running um, as well. That's neat, Michael. Yeah. I like, I like it, adding to the list. I actually know the artist, Amy Hibbs. And that's uh, who posted. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's very cool. I think she just has it on a telephone pole in front of her house. But it's been very successful. She gets a lot of feedback from people, you know, who walk by and get involved with it. But yeah, that would be a great idea. I think I've seen on that episode of Portlandia. <laughs> I think uh, it's, I've definitely seen some of the things um, like that, poetry and little books. Um, no, I totally love it. Yeah. Peter, do you know how they, is it, was it the artist's poetry that was in there or was is No, it she, well, it could be some of hers, but it's mostly people just submit stuff to her and mm -hmm. uh, she puts it in the box. I don't even know if it's locked, and, mm -hmm. uh, but it works really nice. I mean, we could make a more uh, um, sustainable box somewhere on Grand Avenue or whatever in front of the library. And uh, yeah, keep changing it out. Have people submit through our artists, you know, outreach programs. And, uh, and yeah, that would be, I think that's really a great idea. <clears throat> With that type of budget, we could hire a local artist to really build it too. Um, yeah. And yeah. get real creative. Excellent. So this is what um, Sheridan and Tolly um, had put into the chat. Well, that's certainly simple enough. It looks like uh, she just put it back on a picture frame. I mean, it would have to be better than that so that it wouldn't get vandalized, but that's very clever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that, a, is that made of a real glass or it's a plexiglass? Um, I think the wood frame is also beautiful. We could have artisans, you know, custom, custom frame it. It's very pretty. Yeah, heavy duty plexiglass would be fine, I think. Yeah. Just two questions. So, that come to mind uh, as we're talking about, you know, what we want to put forward for the application for the county is, um, do we want to create something? What I guess, first of all, are we getting entries and then we're deciding as a commission, which one we want to put forward um, for city staff to notate and so on, and then submit um, for consideration. Um, that's one. And then second, are, do we want to, whatever our selection is or however the process is, we're going to do it. Is it so like the poetry box, it, like Chairman Ditali said, we could potentially hire an artist to go ahead and do this. Is, is the idea that we want to come up with a project where we're all involved in doing this? Or is it like kind of being outsourced a little bit? We do have involvement on it, but just a little bit 
but you know, it's how much time and bandwidth do people have? Is that also a consideration in the final choice that we decide that we want to submit for the application? Yeah, um, well, so grant applications are usually a staff function, but definitely the project ideas are something that we welcome um, from the commission. And um, it just depends on, you know, what's required of the grant. In this case, it sounds like the county's trying to make it easy on everyone, which we love already. Um, and like, how far does $10,000 take us, you know, in terms of staff time and supplies or, it, so we just will um, consider all of these ideas that are being suggested and see, you know, what, what is the bandwidth and, and what is the cost of carrying any of these out. I, uh, Sorry, I, <laughs> I could ask Amy to, uh, speak at our next meeting and uh, talk about the experience if you're interested. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be great. I just want to note though there is the the grant closes on October 15th. So to the extent that um, that might inform you know the commission's discussion for the grant it, it's probably it won't I don't think the timing would work out. Right. But, but if we want to just explore the idea in general. Yeah, 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 for a future project. Mm -hmm. Angela, quick good. question. Um, sorry. Um, the grant, I know you covered it last time, but the grant can only cover one project at a time or we can combine multiple projects? It, it could combine things, but um, so it was a maximum of $10,000 unless that's changed. It, it didn't say in this announcement, um, but that is what Robin Rodericks, who's the director of the county office, um, said would so, be the maximum. But. Theoretically, we could, let's say, involve a couple of projects that are under $10,000, um, but they could be like put in together and versus just a single project, right? Like it, it doesn't have to be a single project. Correct. Okay. It, but, but again, like that's $10, be something yeah. in the grant requirements I don't, yeah. that I don't know. So I can't- Oh, I see. Say. We'll just have to wait, right? Until the mm -hmm. application opens up, okay. Yeah, I, I would just say that, that kind of reminded me, we have a series of, I don't know, like seven kiosks in our parks and on Centennial Way. And um, we have these really nifty trash cans downtown that have these like kiosk windows in them. So for any reason we ever wanted to advertise in that, um, which we do currently, but like put some artwork or some other things in there that may be something we can do in the future. In addition to this really cool poetry box, I just want to throw that out there. Thank you, Greg. That's a great idea. I know there's also one on the Bay Trail or at the Bay Trail parking um, next to the sewage plant. Yep. Um, that's awesome. So um, Zubin, so yeah, what I was recommending is that we take all or we hand over all the ideas that we had to city staff. And since it will be closing um, between now and then, leave it in their hands to make okay. that decision as best they can. And sure. um, I remember Robin mentioning how it potentially will be vague so that, you know, whatever we can accomplish within that um, grant would okay. be great. But again, she understands things don't always happen as they are presented. So if we have the opportunity to leave it, um, you know, with ideas of what we want to do within that grant okay. and even list some things in ways that um, are really innovating and doing things, opening our community up to new art opportunities that we hadn't had here before and kind of positioning it in that way, yep. then that could leave us open to helping innovate those virtual um performances and shows yeah. that we want to do right um, or something like adding more accessibility into um into our existing art or the art that's to come um so yeah i think that was a great question though um 
Yeah, and the reason I bring it up is because like if we any think of the virtual performance ideas, like that would involve more you know work on our side per se to start getting things lined up. Whereas the poetry side, it would be you know again we obviously we'll, we will be involved, but we find somebody to do it. So it's just like I think you've answered it, uh, Mike. Is that in terms of it's, let's leave it vague, let's see what the ideas are that we compile, leave it up to city staff and see what the end result is. Um, it's, it, that's what it sounds like our kind of our direction is that we want to do. Currently, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and yeah, so I, I think that's kind of <laughs> that's our only option at this point. Um, that works. And then, so are we deciding today, since the deadline is by October fifteenth, do we want to decide in this meeting what are all the ideas that we want to do, or is that what we're aiming for? Oh, I did I take think... notes from the last um, meeting, but if there were any additional things that people have considered since then, yes, we can add it okay. to the list. Okay, cool. I have a question. Could the money be used toward a, um, I know we want to do some mural projects. Could that be in partial payment of maybe a larger amount? Or how does it have to be spent? That's the question, I guess. What they what they want it, you know, to go to. Yeah, I mean that could be a possibility without knowing the details of the grant again. But um, I, for for it, assuming that the maximum grant amount is ten thousand, I I kind of do see that that money could be used to more augment something that we might have in progress, but. Um, you know, like we have the these mural opportunities. There's um, the upcoming February art exhibit. Like maybe there's something we could tack onto that. Um, but you know, something like the poetry box seems pretty low impact. We'll just we'll just have to see. I yeah, I do really like the idea of you know we have a list of of great ideas and letting city staff use their best judgment. Yeah. Yeah, I would also like to add what we discussed last time, you know, what, uh, what Peter was mentioning, that software that allows for artists to submit their portfolios. It is, um, we, we, if we have to purchase it, it will have to be licensed to mm -hmm. South City. It's what the city of San Jose is already doing. And I think it would be very beneficial for us to have our own. It's not expensive. Um, it's between 12 to $1,500. So if we could maybe carve some budget for it, um, that would be a great resource for the local artists to submit their portfolios. I think that was slide, slideroom.com. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Angela, will we know in our, our meeting next month um, what were the ideas submitted or how it was worded or just kind of an update on that since it'll be after we'll probably be meeting after the 15th um and then when it second question is when when is the decision made by the by the county um on what they what they select um i don't know do you remember ursi if, if what robin reported on i i feel like she said that we would have a year to spend the money but i, I again because we got this. Oh, no, I know the year, but just when did they decide if they accept our yeah. pro, uh, the proposals or whatever the proposal, the end result is that we, that the city is submitting. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I expect that they'll share some of those details on the 21st at their grant workshop. Oh, okay. Okay. October 21st. Mm -hmm. um, September 21st. Oh, okay. There's oh. a grant workshop where I, I think that's probably their goal to release the, uh, you know, the grant details and okay. walk people through what they're looking for. Okay, cool. Okay, any other ideas to throw in there? Is that comprehensive for what our folks had? Awesome, I see some thumbs up and hearing none, I'm gonna move on, thank you. Um, so we will move on to new business. Um, back to Ursi. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, new business item is the cancellation of the December 16th meeting. Um, so just a little bit of history on that. Um, traditionally, the Park and Rec Commission and the Cultural Arts Commission are asked uh, a couple months in advance 
uh, if they want to cancel their regular meetings uh, two times in a calendar year, once in the summer and once for December. Uh, the cancellation of the meetings allow commissioners to take time off uh, in December for holiday and year-end uh, commitments without it being counted as a meeting absence. Um, uh, except for last year, 2020, uh, the commission has elected to cancel all December meetings uh, since at least 2001 <laughs> when I became involved and perhaps even before that. Uh, the staff continues with the commission's work during this time, uh, which includes, but is not limited at this point to work on the public art master plan, uh, work on and promotion for the February art exhibit, uh, year end beginning, at, I'm sorry, year end and year beginning preparations uh, and uh, document organization, uh, preliminary research and tasks related to any goals set by the subcommittees, uh, in, uh, initial preparations for the March-April exhibit, whatever that will be, and uh, planning uh, if uh, our prayers uh, work out for a uh, transition from uh, 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 virtual exhibits and uh, events to live events in 2022. So the question is, or the action to be taken is, is would the commission like to cancel the December meeting? Oh, and, and just to follow up on Ursi's comments, um, you know, st staff is very happy to go with whatever the, the commission wishes, but in, in this instance, and particularly for this year, um, this would be a strong recommendation on behalf of our staff. I think um, one of the things that uh, a, a lot of people just don't realize is we do um, there is a lot of staff time spent on the preparation of these meetings. And so December is a, a good opportunity for us to catch up on all of the things that Ursi mentioned. So it's big things, including new big things for us, such as the public art master plan that I think we anticipate will be wrapping up the evaluation of that and negotiating contracts in December. And then we have to hopefully start picking up on the urban art initiatives that the commission has. Um, it's also for small things like just updating the webs our websites, focusing on our brochure updates. And so um, it's a good opportunity for us just to reset in preparation for the year. Uh, I would yes, can to cancel in December for sure. Yeah. Hi. Yes. I vote yes as well. I vote yes as well. I vote yes as well. Uh, yes for me. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank and you yes. so much. And well, I was like, we had enough yeses, but I'm also yes. I guess that was the roll call, but should we do it again just to make sure for the record, or is that good? Okay. I guess we're good then. Um, so I think we're good. Yeah, that was a um, enough of a roll call. So we will move on um, to the subcommittee updates. Um, first with the strategic vision update, I will um, report that Ursi and staff are really close to having that RFP um, finalized and ready to go with the anticipation that it'll be sent out um, at the end of this month. So that process will be underway shortly. Um, Ursi, did you have anything else to add on that? Um, no, uh, we're, it, it's, it's, as you say, very close. And uh, I think we'll be able to meet our, our uh, target release date uh, as uh, we had hoped. And um, we have a, a bountiful list of, of, um, of resources to send it to. So that will be what I'll be working on um, as well, uh, in addition to what the Strategic Vision Commission, I'm sorry, committee um, got from the Berkeley website. So yeah, I'm Great. looking forward to getting it out there. Awesome, thank you. And yeah, if anyone else has any other um, outlets 
for which to send it, uh, feel free to pass that along to Ursi and um, we'll add those to the list. So we'll move on to um, Commissioner Boldenweck for an update on sculpture, if there is one. Well, that, I don't have anything that's um, any new sculpture, but as I'm sure you all are aware, the windswept was pretty badly damaged. And the police report um, apparently has judged it to be um, due to being struck by a vehicle. So once still it is in the courtyard, I don't know whether we've been able to find out whether it's fixable or not, um, but that's the latest on the windswept piece. Is, is the artist still accessible or how long has that sculpture been around? It hasn't been around that long, Peter. And I think that might not be a bad idea at all. Um, I, I have to get together with Ursi and find out um, or see if we can get a hold of him. Is that something that we want to look into or do we want to wait and see what the guys at the courtyard say, whether it's even salvageable or not? I think in any instance where we have any kind of damage to our sculptures, we, we do inform the artist and have them do a consult. So um, that is on our to-do list, although we haven't made that connection yet in this instance. Um, just from, well, Greg, do you want to speak to your informal assessment of the damage? I'm not one yeah. to talk, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it actually looks like it's in pretty good, condition all, all things considered um a car clearly hit it um but there's only like minor glinting on the um the edge of the surface of it um the most sub substantial damage was to the welds where it was mounted to the base um so it does look like it should be a um fairly inexpensive fix you know a couple thousand dollars maybe if we could get a really skilled fabricator out there um or if the artist wanted to make those repairs themselves. Um, or see, do you recall if it, is it stainless or aluminum? I feel like it, it's an yeah. alloy and yeah. I'm not sure <laughs> when you say alloy, it could be no. almost anything. So I, I know it's not stainless. Okay. Uh, and that was one of the reasons that it was so appealing to us is that we've had so much trouble with stainless steel that being an alloy, it was weatherproof practically. Mm -hmm. So how it, that does make it a little bit softer though. I mean, rather than stainless steel, it's right. not that hard. And it makes it more difficult to weld, but it can be done. Uh, yeah, so. RC is the artist. Where did the artist come from? Do you remember? Um, uh, no, I don't, Lynn, uh, but um, it, as Angela said, it is on our to-do, and so I'll be contacting him, uh, or one of us will be contacting him in the very near future um, okay. to find out. I, I kind of feel like he's out of state, but I could be wrong. So I don't well, I do, I do remember that he came to install it when we installed it, so mm -hmm. um, obviously he is available. Whether he would want to do it or not, I don't know. In any case, um, I was very sorry to hear that that had happened, and I certainly suggest we put it somewhere else if it's fixable. Yeah, and so I don't want to give anyone false hope that it's absolutely fixable, but I think, I, from my estimation, I think it can be. It's just what, what I, you know. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. And I agree with uh, your sentiment, Lynn. We may want to think about replacing or relocating it, especially in light of the, um, the fact that it was within the Caltrans sphere of influence. Um, so we may want to move it somewhere outside of the right of way. Just It makes things a lot easier. Um, and as you all know, when it is in the right of way, they essentially own the copyright to the artwork, which I don't think we would want them to, to do so. Uh, I thought that had ceased to be a problem, but <laughs> we yeah. won't bring that up at this point uh, since it's not there anymore. Yeah. Um, we'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Yeah, it's kind of an opportunity to just to be done with that whole issue. Yeah. 
that's certainly the brighter side. That's it. There was one. <laughs> that's it for me. Thank you so much for that unfortunate, but um, with a bright side twist update. Um, we'll move on to Commissioner Bond for the urban art update. Um, so we have a couple of decisions in process around um, murals. We're still investigating some options um, for a couple of sites that um, are, you know, we're, we're talking through visibility and whether we want to go with a um, sort of established mural artist or a different direction. And then um, I actually don't know the exact update about the pair for the Caltrain mural. Um, so I will uh, defer to Ursi and Angela around that one. Um, yeah, we, we have no update at this time, but we are, st we are still in contact with the artist. And um, as far as we know, they, uh, the artist, sorry, um, the artist has referred us to the Presida Eyes organization oh, and yes. artist Susan Cervantes to do the repair. Okay. So um, they're still on board, but we still have to finalize uh, a timeline as well as establish an agreement for them to do the repair. And I think at the last meeting, Ursi announced that the, the, the two of them, um, Susan and, I, I'm sorry, Ursi, I Nikolai, Nikolai um, are, I think their art show is still in progress. Yeah, they're a Chico, Chico in Chico. They've got an art show that they're participating in. Uh, Nikolai is based in Chico um, and uh, uh, they were pretty busy up to the end of last month. Um, I haven't communicated with him since then, but uh, I, I sensed that he was hoping that we could kind of delay because of his work related to that. So it would, would be a good time to contact again. Um, I think that's it for right now. Thank you, Commissioner Bond. Um, we will move to Commissioner Bowen for the fundraiser update. Hey everyone, um, happy to report really great results for our first virtual auction. Um, it took place a couple weeks back and so the bids totaled $810, so that's the total that we raised and then after fees, um, it came to be about $760, which is not too shabby for our first try. And um, we had about 68 bids altogether, averaging about three bids per item. And I think all but maybe three or four items sold out of 25, about 25 items that we had. Um, so it's been, I, I think, personally think it's been a great turnout. Um, uh, in total, there were about 16 bidders. And I think, um, you know, going forward, you just have to sort of get people comfortable with the idea of, of, you know, the online platform and registering ahead of time. I think that was kind of probably one of the biggest barriers to break through, but hopefully, um, you know, more people will get comfortable with that. Um, and I hope that we can continue to do some more online auctions or online events of this nature going forward, um, because it was a really great turnout for the first, for the first run. And I really um, just want to say a big thank you to all of the staff who, who put so much hard work and effort into the marketing, leading up to the event, um, pulling together the platform. I know there was a lot of red tape and hurdles to get through, um, but we, we made it happen. So really happy to report the results on that. Thank you. Yep. And, and thanks to all of you who donated too and supported the event. Um, I really, I, I was one of the bidders and I got, it was my first time to participate in a virtual thing like this. Um, but for people who are tied to your phones, you kind of do get sucked into it because someone was trying to bid, outbid me on one of my favorite pieces <laughs> that I eventually <laughs> let go of. But. Uh, to the commission, I, I just want to let you know, one of the bidders uh, happened to be a former exercise student of mine who I haven't seen in a very long time. And she participated in the auction and we she came, stopped by today to pick up. And she was just, she says, it's so exciting. I was really, it was really a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed doing this. So she, 
uh, actually had done another art auction for a local religious organization. A little hard to hear behind the mask, but um, so yeah, I, I think uh, uh, congratulations uh, to commissioners and uh, to Aaron who did a lot of work, Aaron O'Brien and putting it together and uh, Angela for facilitating it. So it, it really went well. Thank you everyone involved. Um, I wanted to ask, so if we've raised um, just over $750 and annually we desire to um, have the scholarship fund to be as much as possible and in past years has been on average about $3,000. Do we have the opportunity and the bandwidth to do more of these? Um, or do we need to wait a cycle for um, more bandwidth? Because I know that took a lot of effort um, to innovate that and do that. Um, but with that being our first toes in the water, can we expand it to be possibly a pre-holiday um, opportunity for people to buy art for gifts or, um, or beginning of the year type? event maybe to tack on to that too like we could accompany our four shows a year like maybe there is some portion of sales that could go towards that if it isn't that difficult to do um because i think that that's i don't know it's a great idea i th i think it could be possible um i think the the, the biggest part was just getting it started right learning how to use it getting through some of the administrative things, you know, we had to get approvals for on our end, but we've, we've passed that one. So, um, and, and then it definitely helps, like I really appreciate Sarah's efforts and, you know, she, she had all the descriptions lined up and photos taken that helps a whole lot. So then on, the, on our end, it's just a matter of loading the pieces and, you know, helping with publicity and, coordinating, helping with coordinating pickup. Um, I'm sorry, Erin O'Brien isn't here. She's the one who kind of put most of the work into it. I, I hate to speak on her behalf and say, yeah, sure, we can do it. Um, but I think, you know, that was my sense from her is that now that we've done it once, you know, there could be an opportunity to do it again uh, um, with the help of commissioners. Nice. And also, I just want to give a huge shout out to Sarah. Way to go. This is like, your baby, you did it. Um, so huge shout out to you and it came out amazing. So thank you for all the effort. Thanks guys. Yeah, no, um, definitely what couldn't have done it with, I mean, Erin, I, I wish she was here because she definitely um, took the assignment and went running with it. She did awesome. So yeah, it was great team effort. Great, good work. Well, thank you all. Um, if there's no other comments or questions on the fundraiser, we'll move on to the virtual quilt and fiber arts exhibit. I, from I do want to say one thing. So yeah, so if we have art shows in the future, I don't know how we would all coordinate, but the artists could offer their work for sale, right? And then the city takes a percentage if it sells, and the artist, you know, gets the rest, right? I mean, that's another opportunity to, to make money for the artist and the city. Yeah. You know, Ursi and I have talked about that. It's, um, it, it's not impossible. It's just different because we don't hold the art. You know, like yeah, my yeah, no. person art shows, they, they have it. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, if you, if, if you get the, well, if the artists submit the work before the show, an image, then you could, prior to the actual show, show the image. So if people want to bid on it, mm -hmm. they would have that opportunity and then you'd still have the show. Well, if it's virtual too, I mean, it could be up for two weeks or a week. I don't know how long the, how long was the jewelry one? Just a couple of days, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's just, you know, 
an idea. I think something too that has been successful in the past was taking, I took the photos of the youth art show um, exhibits and like everything that was done. So I would be willing to put some thought and effort into like maybe creating like a studio box or a light box and then, you know, having something that we can just kind of put a piece of artwork in, snap a picture and just run through all of them to give it like a professional look to. Uh, the jewelry photos looked pretty incredible. So something similar to that would be really cool. Hmm. Great ideas. So we will move to the virtual um, quilt and fiber arts exhibit with. Uh, Fiber arts, yep. Yeah. Uh, the entry forms have all gone out. We have three entries already and the publicity is out. So that's on schedule. We, I keep thinking this is at the end of the month, but it's only um, about a month away. So Ursi um, and I had um, planned on getting the um, quilters uh, hear from them very shortly too. They've been on vacation and what have you. So, but I think everything's fine. I'm very happy that we have three entries already. So we'll, we should be doing okay, fine. But that's it. I know in the past they were very, um, I, I'm sure that they did it as a fundraising for themselves, but they would do the raffle at their quilting exhibits, would they potentially be willing to donate um, donate a quilt for raffle to co or not raffle, sorry, for fundraising to coincide with the show where we might be able to ra uh, auction off a quilt? Or maybe a couple samplers, you know, like quilting samplers that are a little bit, I mean, quilts can be very expensive. Art quilts can be very expensive, but like samplers um, are much easier to make and perhaps easier to find a, a, a audience that can can uh, hit the price point. Um, Ursi, is that, um, I don't know how we would do a raffle. Um, I, we don't want to call it that anyway, <laughs> an opportunity drawing. Um, I'm, Ursi and I don't have to talk about that. I don't know. Um, do you have anything off the top of your head, Ursi, about uh, auctioning anything during the show? Um, I, uh, I, the quilt, the quilt show, uh, as it was previously done in person, was pretty much um, facilitated by the quilters. Uh, and yes, as Michael has said, they have their. Uh, they had boutique, they had a raffle, they had an opportunity quilt raffle, uh, and they um, donated, they kept some of the proceeds and donated a portion, um, though it, it was not, they're not required to. Um, it was just something that they uh, offered. It, it did help that our former commissioner, um, uh, Rena Donati, was heavily involved with the quilters and, and uh, really push them <laughs> to uh, get this, uh, uh, their program in order and, um, and, uh, and uh, invited them to, to perhaps consider the commission uh, to, uh, in terms of a donation. So um, in the virtual world, we have, uh, I, I don't know, um, we have, Lynn is kind of new to leading this, uh, um, uh, endeavor and the uh, woman that is kind of the organizer, informal organizers of the quilters is also new because uh, Rena has left the area. Um, so I, I don't know what may or may not be possible. It's we can certainly um, ask, uh, but beyond that, I, I couldn't say it's, it's a new world. I'll give BJ a call and see what she says. I I, I have no idea how, um, while that show is being exhibited, how 
how we would have a raffle. I mean, it uh, since we can't sell tickets, um, it would almost have to be a silent auction, which is not impossible. But since we haven't asked them for a quote, um, it might be a little late for that. But I don't know. I, I can uh, check with BJ and find out. But I, that's a good idea, Michael. I, I hadn't even thought of it. Um, they, as Ursi said, they've been very generous with us in the past. They, when you think that it was a fundraiser for them, it, I think we got more money out of that show, um, especially the, uh, the items they had for sale. They, they handed us about $400 every time they did that. So, and considering the prices that they were charging, that, that's a lot of money. Um, in any case, I'll um, talk to BJ and Angela, if you and Ursi could figure out how we could do um, a silent auction movie. Um, you, ha you have, I, I don't know. We'll talk about it and see what we can do, Michael. Awesome. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah, it was just an idea that came to me as we were coming off of the last subcommittee and yeah um you know if it's as simple as our virtual show having a link to the auction that lasts for with one item even that lasts for the duration of the show um and those two things are running concurrently um possibly but again i know i just threw that idea out kind of on the fly so i'm not wanting to put anyone on the spot yeah. with such late notice but thanks for exploring it Okay, well, I'll, as I say, I'll get a hold of BJ again, and she should be home by the end of the week. Well, the end of this week, which is tomorrow. So I'll try to get a hold of her and see what's going on. But that's it. Thank you, Lynn. And um, Commissioner Hobson Cord with uh, Performing Arts Subcommittee Update. Oh, you're on mute, Paula Clady. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Gotcha. Um, at this time, we don't have any um, updates um, on the performing arts, but um, we plan on scheduling a time where Cancino and uh, Commissioner Cancino and Commissioner Maharaj and I can uh, finally connect because the three of us are in the, the subcommittee but haven't had the opportunity to really connect and share some ideas. So um, hopefully the next meeting, uh, we should have something to share. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, sure. And um, Commissioner Marta Hay with uh, community engagement. Um, at the moment, I have nothing new to report. We're still kind of gathering data and looking to uh, um, get some profits. And I thank Commissioner Ryan for creating the spreadsheet. Thank you. Awesome, thank you for the update. And we will toss it actually back to Commissioner Hobson Cord to see if we yeah. have it on February's um, art exhibit, which I know is a ways away, but. It is, and it's gonna be the first art show for the new year, which is exciting. Um, so we wanna, don't have any updates uh, right now. Um, you know, I'll be speaking, uh, connecting with Ursi and getting some more details um, before the next meeting, but we do want to keep um, this art show in the forefront of our uh, minds because um, it is going to be the first art show for the new year, but um, we'll have some updates um, in the next meeting. Great. Thank you. Sure. And we'll... Are there any items from the commission? Um, my usual, usual invitation ex extended to all of you. I have a, another art show, um, Phil's Coffee House in Sunnyvale. And that is going to, it's taking place right now and it's running till about the middle of November towards the end. It may extend um, the, around the end of November. But um, the first four paintings are my original pieces. Um, I'm one of the, I think, um, there's, I think there's about four different artists that are exhibiting. But um, 
yeah, it's the fall collection and it's hosted by artist liaisons. So hopefully you guys will be able to come down and enjoy some good art. The address, I know it's really tiny there, but it's 125 South Francis Drive in uh, Sunnyvale. Thanks for sharing those pictures too and sharing it on the screen. That's a sure. treat to see the preview. We'll try to check it out in person. That'd be nice. Thank you. Anyone else have updates to make? Otherwise, we'll open it up to items from staff as well. Hey, I, um, we'll start with the events that are listed on there, but Ursi and I do have additional items from staff to add to that. Um, so starting with this weekend, if anyone is interested in participating in our volunteer coastal cleanup day, it's happening on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And we're meeting at Haskins Way at the Bay Trail. So um, I will be there. Hope to see you there. <laughs> Um, oh, Angela, can you drop that address in the chat, please? Oh, sure. You mean Thank the, you. the the meetup the, yeah. or the coastal the meetup? Coast? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we'll do. Um, and then our next big event that Park and Rec and um, other city departments have been busy working on is our City Hall's 101st birthday concert. Um, we were planning a 100th birthday concert last year, but obviously it was canceled because of COVID. So we're bringing it back. It's gonna be a day full of music. We also have our um, two park and recreation dance groups, Ballet Folklorico and um, our hula groups dancing, uh, entertainment for kids and resource tables. Um, our main acts on the big stage will be um, Orchestra Boringuen and Headliner, headlined by Tainted Love. So if you follow any of those bands, or even if you don't, um, it's sure going to be a fun day, and I hope you can join us there too. So those are two good bands, so that should be good. Um, do you have anything to add, Greg, about any of those events or Coastal Cleanup Day in particular? I wasn't sure if I'm missing any of those details. Um, no, but now I'm inspired to take some of that trash and turn it into art or something from the. <laughs> oh, well, that, that could be an idea. What <laughs> a cigarette butt, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say, you know, life is one big canvas, so get out there and create. <laughs> um, Ursi, do you want to jump over to your thing before I go into my other items here? Sure. Uh, I just want to uh, call the uh, commission's attention to their packet. When you have a chance to look, you will see that the subcommittee uh, our commission goals list has been updated uh, to uh, include the 2022 art shows so that they're in the forefront of your mind. Um, uh, I've also uh, updated the um, uh, list of committees and members uh, to reflect what was uh, ultimately decided. However, uh, again, to remind you, if you have any um, changes uh, to please feel free to let us know, uh, Angela or myself, and uh, we can adjust it as, as needed. Um, and, and then also to let you know that uh, uh, as, as Paula Claudine uh, submitted her flyer for her event, if, if you'd like to uh, have me um, include any flyers of events that you are either interested to let the commission know and included the packet um, that to, to please send it to me um, and I can include it uh, with the correspondence. Um, I, I would say best would be the week prior, the Friday prior to the commission meeting, but in a worst case scenario, sometimes the Monday of the commission meeting week would be okay too. And I think that's all I have. That's all I have. <laughs> okay, well. Angela, before we go to your update, mm -hmm. can I just ask with um, with what Ursi just mentioned, 
can we on future agendas actually get that date so that we know we could all see here during the meeting when that deadline is for the next meeting to get that content in? Um, so just put like next to the correspondence agenda item, like next correspondence due by. Yeah, or okay. even, yeah, or even above the next meeting, October 21st, 2021, oh, kind of a, okay. you know, deadline to submit for the next meeting um, mm -hmm. would be great because I know many of us we'll probably get to that date and did I miss it? Did it come? Okay. Can awesome. Do that. Thank you. Any other questions on things covered so far before I jump into my next pieces? All right. Um, I, I did want to follow up on um, a report, something we reported at the last meeting about commissioner stipends. Um, so we did get a few questions after I think some of you realized you weren't getting the $100 increase I said you would be getting. Um, <laughs> so sorry, that was my error. Uh, actually, so the, the council did approve the $100 stipend on, at their July 28th meeting, but they had, it, it required a change in the city's ordinance which requires a reading 30 days later. So that came back and was approved again on August 25th. Um, and it looks like it, the, it won't be effective until September 25th. So you actually will not see the increase until we get to the October meeting. Um, so sorry again, that was my error. <laughs> I have to jump in here. That was not uh, Angela's error. That was my error, for which I apologize. I, I was so excited. I jumped the gun. I was like, oh, I can't wait to tell the commission. Uh, but I should have uh, like got my ducks in a row before I put the word out. So I, I am really sorry. Angela, you're so gracious. It was not her, not any of these guys. It was me. So sorry, you guys, but it's coming. So Does this mean I have to send you. the boat back? <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. Cancel all those Amazon orders or whatever you, yeah. <clears throat> we haven't put water in the swimming pool yet. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. October, Lynn, October. Yeah, <laughs> in time for Halloween. Yes. Uh. First world problems. This is this the fact that there's an increase. I mean, really, it's, this is awesome. So. <laughs> But good, good looking out, it's always good to check and make sure you know, mm -hmm. that all the administration is happening the way it's supposed to be. So, um, and then the next item on my list is also money related. It's um, related to the budget. So we don't often look at this. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Um, but I also got a few questions about this too and thought it would be a good opportunity to touch base. So. This is the um, summary of the Cultural Arts Commission's funds that um, we have. It's included every month in your packet and it follows the fiscal year from July through June. So we've pretty much just started the fiscal year and we're just reporting on the up to the prior month's balances. So, um, so far we just covered July and August. Um, and I think we did receive, so one of the questions I got was, you know, what about the, the fundraising funds and any other donations received in August? Um, although we, we might have received it in August, especially if it was in the latter half of the month, you won't necessarily see it reflected here. Sometimes those funds, you'll see the following month. So it just takes a, a little while to catch up. And then also, um, just by virtue of when the commission's meeting is, sometimes not all funds for the month have settled. Um, so sometimes when I run the report the following month, you know, there are some adjustments to be made to the prior month. And, and I just kind of correct it as I go along there. Um, one of the things that I have changed that's different from how we've tracked it in the past is that um, I'm carrying over all of these balances here under um, this column. 
just to continue tracking, you know, how much we receive from year to year for general donations, um, artist entry fees, interest allocation, scholarship donations. So this is one of the ways that I'm in particular trying to track the amount that's been dedicated to the scholarship or that has been raised via fundraising year to year. Um, I don't know if that makes sense to everybody, but I, I think some a few of you have been involved in this conversation. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to follow up. And then um, the other thing I did here under encumbrances is this is money that is already set aside for specific projects. This includes $45,000 for the Caltrain Plaza project. And then um, each year, I think a, a commission meeting long ago, um, the commission had established a minimum of $3,000 to be set aside from the fund for the youth scholarship. So we did spend that completely in the prior fiscal year. That's why this, this um, cell here is set to zero. And then I just renewed it again to start the fiscal year. Um, so the, the total amount of funds minus the encumbrances that currently the Cultural Arts Commission has is about $28,900. Thank you. Love some good budget talk. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, um, and I think that was all for my items from staff. I don't know if Sharon or Greg have anything else to add. Um, I was just gonna add, you should receive an email, email invite, um, so check your emails, um, for a tour of the LPR site. Um, so the Library Parks and Rec Center. Um, you all don't have to come, but you're more than welcome to join us for that. It should be kind of a fun time to go out and see the construction. Um, they're actually started on the park and rec wing now. So the steel going up is all, um, the fresh steel anyway, is all park and rec. So it's actually really cool to see where our new like, spaces are gonna be, where our new craft room will be and so forth. So you all are invited to that. Uh, Great. That's it for me. Oh, and Greg, I know you sent out the doodle. Um, there are only two dates, right? That was uh, October 14th, was it? And uh, I think next week, next week. So you said something about a forum so that Park Rec, Parks and Rec and us can't be there at the same time. It wasn't really clear. Oh, you can. Um, it's just if, if for whatever reason we, want, we wanted to talk business while we were there, you know, we could talk oh. about what sort of programming we would have in the space. We just want, want to have a quorum of either body. So oh, we can I see. mingle the two, but we don't want to have, say, uh, six of the cultural arts commissioners there. Um, and if we do, then we, we can all be there together. We just can't talk anything related to what the board's um, area of influence is, you know. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Any other staff updates? questions from commissioners. Okay. Well, then that said, uh, hearing none, we'll adjourn this meeting at 7.33 p.m. And I uh, look forward to our next meeting on October 21st. And uh, see Ursi raising her. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Ursi. Uh, that's okay, Michael. I, 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 yeah, it's just, uh, I have some items under correspondence. <laughs> Got it. I'm sorry. I thought we covered <laughs> correspondence. I apologize. No worries. No worries. I, we I, will I, not I, adjourn the meeting then. And I, um, we'll go to correspondence. I normally don't have much to say. It's all in your packets. But I, I there, there's an item that came be, after the packet was sent. Um, and I wanted to just call the commission's attention to it. Uh, the Peninsula Arts Museum, which is located in Tanfren, has a an exhibit coming up, I believe, sometime in October. Um, uh, and uh, uh, hopefully Angela can put the, uh, the, the, the link in the chat, but if not, I can certainly send you uh, the, the email notice. Uh, that's one. And then the second item is uh, Artspan Studios uh, in San Francisco is holding their annual uh, open studios, which begins today uh, and runs through November 21st. 
Um, and uh, that also is something that perhaps you might want to investigate. I, I haven't really looked, but I believe th that uh, it is not only uh, possible to go see studios in various neighborhoods of San Francisco, but also there's a virtual aspect as well. So I just, because they're happening like now, <laughs> I wanted to let you all know uh, rather than wait for the next meeting. That's it. Awesome. Thank you, Ursi. And again, I apologize. I no yeah, <laughs> thought we went there already. So um, thank you very much. We will adjourn the meeting at 7.35 p.m. and see you on October 21st. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Thanks, Take care. Bye. 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 See ya.